Hi, I'm Nick. I'm a third year HSPS student at the University of Cambridge. I'm also a tutor with the Oxbridge Group. And today I thought I'd make a short video uh, talking you through my HSPS personal statement and hopefully giving you some more general advice about writing personal statements and about the HSPS application process as a whole. Uh, obviously this video is going to be based off my personal statement and my personal experience um, and you shouldn't take it all as gospel because each, each application will be individual uh, and different but I hope that you can take away some general key points uh, that will be helpful to you when you're writing your application and hopefully seeing an example uh, will be quite good to you as well. So let's get into it. So as I said I'm a third year undergraduate uh, studying at St John's College at the University of Cambridge. Um, and I chose HSPS because I was really interested at school at doing uh, politics and global, uh, international relations. And so uh, HSPS is the only way you can do that at Cambridge at an undergraduate level. Um, when I think about my prep for Cambridge, I don't remember doing an excessive amount, especially compared to some people. Um, all I remember doing uh, was reading, essentially. It's important to keep in mind that I, I did my application during COVID, so everything was online. But also, um, yeah, my my most important thing for my preparation in all my free time was just reading beyond my curriculum and sort of, uh, yeah, reading stuff I didn't have to because it just gave me more stuff to talk about, not only in personal statements, as we'll see, but uh, when it came to interview processes as well. Um, so in writing personal statements, uh, I'm pretty sure you have to send in an Oxbridge personal statement or application in October. And I think I probably started my personal statement at the start of September. Um, I definitely remember some people at school uh, starting it far earlier in the middle of the summer. That's not something I did. Um, but yeah, if you want to do that, that's completely up to you. Uh, in the same uh, line of thinking, I also don't remember doing too many drafts, maybe like five or six drafts. Whereas I definitely remember some people at school going through 10 or 20. Uh, it's absolutely no problem to go through loads of drafts. Uh, it was just for me, I thought that uh, I didn't want too much input from other people. Uh, like I said, it's your personal statement. Each one's going to be individual. And I think it's definitely one of those things where if you keep on revising it and going over it, um, you can get in your own head about it and end up with something that you didn't really want in the first place. Uh, one thing I'd say about that as well is, especially when you're getting advice from other people about your drafts or your personal statements, is to definitely listen to other people as well other people's advice but not to take every single piece of advice on board and stick with what you think you want to do because it is your personal statement and I think if you listen to too many bits of advice and change it up then it'll end up being quite muddled and confused um yeah so before we go into my personal statement as a whole I thought I'd come up with a quick list of key points just to show you um some things that I think are really important to keep in mind for an HSPS personal statement um, obviously you don't have to take this as gospel these are just the things that I think are most important so first of all building a narrative thread uh, so personal statements I think they're quite difficult things to do because they're obviously uh, you're trying to show your passion and interest but at the same time it can turn into a bit of a list of stuff that's so good about you so I think a really nice way to stretch your personal statement is to build it around ideas uh, and to let the idea show uh, the different parts of like your interest and passion in the subject so for example like we'll see in my personal statement I built it around the sort of confluence of politics and sociology um, and different bits of my personal statement whilst they were talking about me were also talking about uh, different aspects of that relationship um, the second point that I've written is illustrate your knowledge and apply it which I think is quite an important one I think a lot of people do readings in their personal statements and will state, um, you know, I read Huntingdon and he said this, or I read Keohane and he said this. But I think a really important point to show, especially for an Oxford personal statement, is to illustrate your ability to critically think and to analyse. Because HSPS as a subject isn't really about content, it's about your ability to uh, read an article or take an argument and pick it apart and see what it's about. And, um, yeah, to, bu to build your own argument off that. So, yeah, I think an important thing to do is to take your readings, uh, but then illustrate your take on them. So it's, you don't have to agree or disagree, but just to sort of show that you're thinking beyond just the face value of it and sort of, yeah, thinking about the different implications or, yeah, whether someone's right or wrong. 
or whatnot. Um, and I think that's something that will just give you an extra, um, yeah, an extra leg up on people that just sort of state what they've done for their readings. Um, next, I've said, yeah, it, unnecessary and irrelevant topics. So I think for an Oxbridge personal statement, at least, it's not the worst thing to have in. But I definitely remember being told that if you're applying to Oxford and Cambridge, they really don't care about uh, these sort of extra extracurriculars, what sports you've done and whatnot. And whilst uh, I get that uh, other unis definitely do, um, yeah, it's, it's something to keep in mind uh, and to definitely, for, for my personal statement at least, as we'll see, I stayed focused on the academic for most of it. Uh, now, the last two points that I've written are show a genuine interest for the subject and uh, always show your interest as opposed to stating it, which I think is probably one of the most important takeaways that you'd be able to get from this video. Uh, and that for me is, um, yeah, it's probably the most important piece of advice I got given when writing my personal statement by a teacher. Um, and essentially what they said was anyone can say, I love history, I love politics, um, I have a real interest in this and a passion for that. And a lot of personal statements, you get that. However, I think that a far more compelling thing to read in a personal statement is an account of what you've done or an account of things that you've done, things that you've read, uh, and really showing your interest um, and showing your passion through the things that you've done and through the things and the way that you talk about things, as opposed to having to state, I, I really enjoy politics. Um, and maybe that's a bit ambiguous at the moment, but I think hopefully reading through my personal statement, you'll be able to see how I tried to do that. So this is the first uh, paragraph of my personal statement. Uh, I won't read it out to you, but I'll point out certain bits of it. Uh, firstly, just to go over some of the overall goals of the paragraph, um, it'd be to introduce a couple of authors, uh, specifically Machiavelli and James Madison, um, that were beyond the normal curriculum of what I'd studied at school um, which in turn would like illustrate me, my interest and show whoever's reading it that I've been reading beyond my curriculum and sort of have an interest in politics that extends beyond what I've wrote, I was doing in A-levels or IB at the time. Uh, and also to introduce this narrative thread that I was talking about earlier that goes throughout the paragraph. So, um, yeah, if you look at the first sentence, it is in Machiavelli's seminal work, The Prince, that the inherently human dimension of politics receives its most telling treatment. So really all this paragraph's doing for me is sort of setting out that link between politics, sociology and a bit of anthropology that I'm going to continue to talk about later on in the personal statement. Uh, like I said earlier as well, there are loads of ways to go about this. I know lots of people think uh, or lots of people like to start off personal statements with like a personal anecdote. But I just thought getting straight into it uh, and starting off with that sentence uh, sort of is quite it's quite a nice hook um, for whoever's reading it and also illustrates to them uh, my academic focus and sort of gets straight to the point, really. Um, and so, yeah, overall, uh, I quite like this first paragraph because it's very to the point and sort of drops you straight in it. Uh, and for me, uh, is yeah, is in keeping with that thing of uh, me not, not talking about myself, but through my discussion of stuff like The Prince and like uh, the Federalist Papers that I'd done a little bit of reading of, not too much, uh, that I could illustrate to whoever's reading this that I had a real interest in politics and sociology. Um, so I hope that sort of more accurately uh, illustrates what I mean when I say you want to show your interest and your um, enthusiasm as opposed to just stating it. I'd also say that I sort of, I only mention Machiavelli in this first paragraph really um significantly and it's really in that first sentence but in my interview i got absolutely grilled on it and i'd say the first 10 minutes of my interview were just uh like them grilling me on Mach machiavelli um and the reason that's important is because i think anything you write about in your personal statement you should be ready to talk about um and you should yeah be confident in yourself that you can talk about it so i nearly got caught um yeah off guard but yeah, luckily I sort of had done a bit of uh, prep beforehand uh, and knew a little bit of what I was talking about uh, when it came to the prince. Not really, but 
um, yeah, definitely everything you put into your personal statement, be ready to talk about it uh, when you get given an interview. Um, and so, yeah, that's my first paragraph. So moving on to my second paragraph, um, it's this is like the biggest paragraph that I wrote in my personal statement. And I think uh, probably for good reason, because this paragraph for me, the reason that I wrote it was to not only introduce more text that I'd written, but really to illustrate my ability to be analytical and to make connections between subjects that I'd studied in school. Um, and so a bit of an overall point for HSPS, I think that when you start HSPS, especially in your first year, you do uh, two politics modules. So you do history, political thought and like an international relations module. Uh, but then the other two modules you do really uh, can be anything from sociology, social anthropology to stuff like archaeology I did in my first year and criminology. Um, and the reason that's important is that I think a big thing in HSPS personal statements that you want to show is your ability to make connections and also to be sort of intersectional and interdisciplinary. Um, and so what I wanted to show in this paragraph, I think, was my ability to sort of uh, look at what I was doing in English and then look at what I was doing in politics and uh, draw connections between the two of them. So, yeah, if we look into what I was actually writing about, um, so I did IB at school and my this is the first bit of this about my extended essay project which is a bit like an epq for anyone that does a level um and so here i've got myself talking about two books uh two pieces of literature um we and men like gods uh, and then essentially trying to pull out from that uh sort of sociological and political conclusions um also one thing that i remember i made a conscious effort to do was to relate back to the authors that i talked about in the first stage and I think when you're writing your personal statement, this is probably quite an important thing to do. So definitely show your um, sort of proficiency in different areas and different authors. But if you really want to yeah, show your ability to make connections, then draw back to that. So here I talk about the literature. But then if you notice, I go back to the fact uh, right in the middle of the paragraph. Uh, it's this specific topic that in intrigued me uh, when I talk about uh, human nature. Uh, as I saw it echoed not only by Madison, but in my politics lessons. Uh, and then I talk about neo-realism and classical realism. Uh, and I think one thing that helped me out a little bit with this personal statement was that uh, sort of ability to uh, be analytical and to illustrate the fact that I was thinking outside of not only my subject, but my curriculum and making those connections between things that were like uh, literature and politics. So yeah, I think that's definitely something to keep in mind for your HSPS. No matter what you're writing about, um, like I said, content's not that important. It's just your ability to be analytical about that content and to make connections between sort of seemingly very distant pieces of uh, yeah pieces of academic content. Um, so what else did I do in this? I uh, introduced more text that I talked about and more ideas um, and contrasted the stuff that I learned at school. So sort of like realism, neorealism. Neo which is stuff that you'll learn about uh, if and when you go to do HSPS at Cambridge. Um, so yeah, not only to talk about that, but to contrast that to stuff that I'd uh, done before uh, and that I found out on my own beyond the course, sort of like Hobbes Rousseau. Uh, and to be honest, I'd only really like looked at it on a surface level. Um, and once again, Hobbes Rousseau is something that you look at in first year HSPS. Um, and that is something in my interview that they did bring up again. Uh, but yeah, overall, this paragraph sort of um, just yeah introduces more texts. But the most important thing this paragraph does is uh, draw connections between things that you wouldn't necessarily think of when you thought of a political course. Um, and that's something to definitely keep in mind when you write your personal statement. If you want to uh, stand out a little bit is to show your ability to... Um, think outside the box and think outside what politics normally is so moving on to my next paragraph um, I go on to talk about a book that I read at school called The Origins of Virtue uh, essentially the book's a bit about I really enjoyed it it's about uh, a bioanthropologist uh, who essentially looks at different uh, examples throughout the animal kingdom of uh, 
like cooperation and reciprocal behavior and uses it to build a basis on why morality and virtue exist today. Uh, and so I sort of, um, yeah, wanted to mention this in my personal statement as it not only shows me reading beyond my curriculum, but it's also a little bit different. I'm sure you've heard the classic, if you're applying for economics, don't talk about, you know, free economics and super free economics um, and all the, uh, the classic books that, you know, a lot of people will be talking about. So for me, this was something a bit different that I could use to not only talk about the link between politics, sociology and anthropology, but also to, yeah, set myself apart a bit and talk about something differently. The one thing I will say is that I did really enjoy this book and I, it did, uh, I did talk about it a lot, um, here and in my interview. Um, and although it did make me seem a bit different in my interview, they definitely wanted to know that I knew what I was talking about. So in, in my second, so you have two interviews and in my second interview, essentially like 50 to 60% of the thing was just drilling me on like what this, uh, yeah, what the um, book was about, how it related to politics, how different aspects of that related to politics. Uh, and I'm very glad that I did actually read the book in a whole, uh, because if I hadn't, then I think I would have been left a bit for dead. So yeah, one thing I would say is that anything you do mention, definitely try and read as broadly as you can to make yourself, set yourself apart, make yourself seem a bit unique. Um, but yeah, one thing that I would say is everything you say you've read on your personal statement, read, or at least read enough that you can talk about it uh, succinctly and persuasively um, to an to an interviewer when you do get an interview. Yeah. So this is my penultimate paragraph. Um, and overall in this paragraph, what I look to do is, again, illustrate my ability to be analytical, make connections, um, show that I'm applying myself beyond school. I think most importantly here, uh, I'm showing my like sort of genuine passion and initiative that I had at school for politics. Um, and essentially what I write about is a little project that I did in summer uh, during COVID where I pieced together over only about a week uh, a number of conversations that I had with different political groups in Cornwall that were campaigning for devolution. Um, and now whilst this fit in with my sort of uh, politics, anthropology and sociology uh, narrative that I was spreading throughout this uh, personal statement, uh, I think one thing that it also massively benefited me with was it was sort of evidence of my genuine um, interest and enthusiasm for the subject. And it's something that if you are applying to Oxbridge or also to really any university that I'd recommend you doing in the summer, as opposed to starting your um, personal statement earlier, uh, maybe, yeah, do something like this or um, go enter essay competitions, do something like a little bit extra that's not reading. Because I think that's something that was a massive uh, bonus for me or benefit for me when I was in my interview phase that I thought went quite well was that I had this thing that I could talk about and so yeah where uh, coming back to the personal statement as a whole one of the ways that I started preparing for it as opposed to sort of like starting to write one of the most important things I did was I just wrote lists of stuff that I could talk about and I think the more you have on that list that you can talk about um, the better position you're in so yeah uh, I definitely recommend doing open online courses or sort of these like initiative projects uh, like the one you can see here because yeah once you're in the interview stage and once you're in your personal statement stage it's really like um, yeah more things that you can use and more benefits for you um, so yeah if, I, if we just look through here uh, obviously I th it's a bit one thing I would criticize about this paragraph is that it doesn't flow as well as I'd like it to um, the link from Ridley's ideas of what do I say, harnessing human nature and forming optimal political communities, moving my research interest to political decentralization. I think that link's probably a bit clunky and I could have written it a bit better to make the personal statement flow and have more connections as a whole. Um, but other than that, yeah, no, uh, you can see me saying here, uh, my project that I started in the summer out of pure curiosity, um, it's like me trying to subtly show how like, basically keen I am for HSPS without actually having to say that. Um, and once again, it's an example of, yeah, showing your enthusiasm as opposed to saying, I'm really, really interested in this, which I think can only be a good thing, really. So, yeah, out of this paragraph, uh, obviously you can see sort of me carrying on the narrative thread, showing my 
enthusiasm and passion. But one thing I'd say that's really important for anyone writing a personal statement or looking to apply to Oxbridge politics is doing that little extra thing that is just something that's really nice to talk about when you get to an uh, to an interview stage and something that will make your application look a bit better once you've um, yeah once you submit it. Um, so this is my final paragraph. There's not too much really to talk about here. It's just me sort of, yeah, summing everything up. Um, one thing I do do here that you can see is trying to uh, display in summary the sort of breadth of stuff that I've done. So you see I say, whether research in devolutionism in Cornwall, in the literature of Wells and Zamyatin, or reading the bioanthropology of Ridley to the political philosophy of Madison. Um, so yeah, it's a bit... Uh, you know, a bit of a long sentence, maybe a bit dense, but it's me sort of subtly saying in an uh, in a sentence, you know, this is how much that I've done, and like this is how interested I am, basically. Um, and basically, me trying to portray to whoever's reading this personal statement that I'm a person um, and a student that has like such a wide um, knowledge base and has such a wide interest in different parts of politics and sociology. Um, other than that, overall, uh, trying to conclude the narrative here and finally at the end sort of do a bit of what I said not to do, which is talk about myself quite a lot and say, uh, sort of like sum it up and leave the person reading my personal statement with why I want to do the subject. Um, and I think words like, um, com I think it say compels me to study, yeah, compelling my academic focus and sort of sentence structure like that. Um, and yeah, in the final two sentences, really moving away from the academic stuff and leaving in the mind of your um, examiner or whoever's reading this, um, as like a final personal note on why you, you should be the one studying this, or at least you should be the one getting an interview. Um, other than that, yeah, just like, as I said, um, the same thing throughout this whole personal statement is illustrating the breadth of your knowledge, illustrating your, in, illustrating your enthusiasm, uh, Con concluding and having this like complete narrative that carries itself throughout your personal statement and finally at the end uh, a bit of a personal note showing your individual desire and enthusiasm for studying um, those would be the most important things I'd say to take away from this conclusion yeah so uh, just to summarize uh, like I said there's no one perfect way to write a personal statement this personal statement you've just read is definitely not a perfect one um, it's definitely got mistakes in it and the way that you'll go about your personal statement will be different to it and that's completely fine. Um, but I hope there are things that you've seen in there, little bits that you can use um, or things that you've seen that like you might not want to do. Um, either way, yeah, don't think that the way that one person does it or the way that one person tells you to do it has to be the way that it's done. It just has very broad, broad subjects and depending on what your interests are, you'll get different individuals interviewing you. Um, next, I'd say, is my most important point that I've talked about or that I got told when I was applying. And that's in showing your interest, always uh, do things and talk about doing things as opposed to saying them. Um, I've said it before, but yeah, it so sounds so much better other than, uh, than saying I was interested in politics to saying doing this really interested me or in doing this it fascinated me and really using what you've done as uh, a way to illustrate your interest kills two birds with one stone yeah, and it's much more helpful and compelling to read than just someone saying something um yeah next illustrating your breadth of knowledge so definitely read loads and talk about all the books that you've read but loads of personal statements that will be coming in will be talking about books saying i read this and i read that what they really want to see in hsps like i say in the next point is not you focusing on the content of what you've read, but you analysing, being critical about and making connections between what you've read and what you're learning at school or different things that you've done. Uh, and I think, yeah, showing your ability to think critically and analyse stuff um, is one of the most important traits they're looking for. So definitely use this personal statement as a chance to do that. Finally, yeah, keep it relevant. And also I'd say an important thing is just write about what you're in interested in because that's what will be best. Well, that's what you'll write best about. Uh, and if you do all that, I'm sure uh, you'll do very well. 
uh, I hope you f found this helpful. Um, and if you need uh, any, if you do get through and get an interview and you need any more advice on that, please reach out to the team at the Oxbridge group and they have a whole group of tutors that they can help you with. Uh, yeah, thank you very much.